right, I'm uh, Storm. I'm uh, living on uh, my Canoe Cove from 1972. It's a 41-foot uh, tri-cabin built uh, the same way as the original were and then behind us here is the Tanu Warrior which is a commercial fishing vessel that uh, is now 70 years old and we've just acquired that and we're uh, we're bringing that back into uh, use again because it's been decommissioned for a fair while. Today we're going to walk you through the boat that I've been living on for 10 years. I uh, wasn't really interested in living in boats before but this one is uh, certainly adequate uh, and comfortable enough as you'll see as we walk through the so it hasn't had a lot of use it's clean and, uh, and and I like it and at the end of the day that's what's important to me <clears throat> there's a number of reasons why I live on a boat and I didn't start on a boat I started in cars and and truck and uh, vans and campers in the 1980s I've been on a, an extended camping trip that started in the early 1980s. I've been out here since 2011 on the boat, so I couldn't really work. I was undependable. I was sick all the time. Every time I broke a sweat, I was sick. So it didn't really lend, I didn't, I wasn't really suited to uh, living indoors and uh, you know, the, the regular way that most people have gone. I needed to find another way. So it was living in, uh, you know, vans in the 80s and 90s, and I had my Econoline vans and I had them set up so that you open up the back doors and all my tools were there and I traveled and repaired cars and lawnmowers and boats and things like that, you know, from town to town or set up in a town. I could work when I was feeling okay. I didn't have to work when I wasn't feeling okay. As I got tired of looking around for places to uh, sleep, uh, you know, it's too hot in the morning, it's too cold at night when you're in one of those tin cans. There's, uh, I lived on the dock over here uh, for five years in the winter time as well. But uh, last year, after they closed down the COVID uh, era, I moved out here. Uh, I come from Campbell River and I moved out here and set up block and I'm tied in with a block at the back and a block up forward so the boat just stays put and then I can set up my solar panels and if I get the satellite uh, internet I can do that and uh, and then I don't have to pay the 550 bucks a month over there I can spend that on fuel which uh, last year well this year um, 2022 fuel was now caught costing me a thousand dollars a month just to stay warm. I live on a boat uh, because I've uh, outgrown the vans and trucks and campers and cars and motorhomes and RVs that I have lived in over the past 40 years that I've been doing this. I started off small and every so often something happens and I move into a slightly bigger environment and then I outgrow it and I move into a slightly uh, bigger environment. Uh, my health played a part uh, in the first 50 years of my life, which made me unemployable, and yet I wasn't interested in uh, chasing out the uh, disability pension and those sorts of things. I wanted to do it on my own, on my own terms. So I set up my own auto repair business. I did small engine repair. I worked at the boat uh, factory when I was feeling better in the 80s for a while, and then. In January 1990, I decided I start my own auto repair business, and then for the next five years, I just lived out of the back of my van and just traveled around. Uh, you'd open the back doors, and my tools would all be there, and the bunk above that. You open up the side doors, and there was the living space. I had a lot of fun doing it. It's been an, uh, an adventure living in my van down by the river, but uh, it wasn't so much that I chose it as that it kind of chose me though I did make a decision in the 1970s that there's no way I was going to take a mortgage and buy the bank five houses for the shit shack I was getting. For a long time I lived my life which was if you didn't have, if I didn't have cash I didn't need it. I would just find another way to achieve my end and for the most part that worked out. But it was mostly my health and my and my, and my bad attitude that uh, got me living. Um, uh, independently and uh, being really a pioneer in some respects of, uh, of the tiny home. So it was always a, just a matter of uh, finding a way to make ends meet and uh, survive uh, through it all. The reason I moved off land onto sea was that it really outgrown the living on land thing. I'd gone from a Cortina in 1983 to a Conaline Vance to a truck and camper to a motorhome to a 40-foot trailer and uh, 
then when um, I got a small inheritance, uh, that gave me an opportunity to go out and to, to buy this boat. And so I had the boat and I had the trailer, but I was living my life on the water and I've always enjoyed the water. Um, and I was having an adventure. I was meeting new people and stuff where I was living in the trailer park. I was just meeting the same old, same old all the time. I'd, I'd outgrown it. So I sold all that off and uh, bought fuel for this. And uh, that got me uh, off land and onto water. But last year was the first year in about 10 years, maybe not quite, that I've spent the whole winter out here. Uh, normally I would go to the dock and tie up over winter and then pay the 500 or so dollars a month that it costs to stay on dock. They don't want people living on their boats on dock. They're doing everything that they can to get rid of people living on boats on the dock. Um, and so I just took the opportunity at the end of the COVID last year in April, so what's that, 15 months ago, something like that, I took that opportunity to untie from the dock and move out here before the government changed their mind again and said, oh, you've got to be locked down again. I have friends here. Um, I like it here. Um, most of the things a person needs can be acquired from here. You still got to go to Campbell River for some things, but, but this is a great spot uh, and it's well protected in the winter. And I have enough boating friends here that if I run into trouble or they do, we can help each other out. And we do. Um, when stuff happens, we get the call and we go and help each other out. So this is the, uh, the aft cabin as it's known. And this is the heating system that we were talking about earlier. Inside of this Pacific Dickinson boiler are seven, six or seven coils done in stainless steel. And so when the fire is going, it heats up water. The water is contained in a tank behind that panel there. <clears throat> that water that's heated then goes down through a copper tubing and out into the floor in the main salon, which we'll see in a minute. That uh, uh, copper tubing and aluminum fins and it radiates the heat off of this. But you know, the stack also produces heat. The body also produces heat. But it does, it does cost to keep it warm. Uh, there's other alternatives, you know, there's vegetable oil, there's cooking grease, there's, there's things, used engine oil, and you can mix some of those things to create a concoction of toxicity that will keep you warm. I hear that people living on land have this thing called a closet. On boats we have a thing called a wardrobe. And there's mine, uh, one of them, one of the two. And it's fairly spacious, keeps a lot of stuff dry and out of the way. These are two lamps that I made uh, when I worked at Canoe Cove and these are the replicas of the George Washington lamp from the 1776 crossing of the Delaware River and we built those on Hornby in the 80s and 90s. Over here we have this thing normally we call a bathroom in a, in a home but on the boat it's called a head even though it's not at the head of the boat anymore or at the aft but it is uh, it does all the things that it needs to do. It's got the running hot and cold water. It's got like the toilet, the flushes. You know, you've got to pump the toilet. You can get electric ones, but it, you know, we just pump this one. And then there's a full stand-up shower in behind uh, this uh, area here with a wa hot water tank that's uh, electrically heated under this bunk. So originally these boats were set up with a single bunk and a single bunk. And uh, the people that I bought it from were a couple, so thinking that they wanted to sleep together, they've extended this out and they've brought it out to here and it has a nice um, five or six inch foam mattress on it. It's uh, regulation size, you know, it's just, it's just a store-bought uh, uh, six inch mattress. It's got incandescent uh, 12 volt bulbs that look just like the old bulbs we used to have in, in homes. But those are 12 volt incandescents and, and I don't use them very much, they use more power. And this one here, even though you can't really see it right now, before I bought the boat, when I came on the boat, I went, that's the first thing that's going over. And then I sat here the night that I bought the boat with fire going and sat up here, just kind of thinking about all the things and I turned these lights on and those lights are never leaving now. Even though you can't see it, but all the edges light up uh, uh, with light and the, the antennae operate with light. This is what you want. It's called hypervent and uh, it's expensive. It's about $20 a foot but uh, it's well worth it and what that does is it keeps your mattress off and it 
any moisture goes through and, and it's able to breathe. Because yeah, I went through a lot of years of uh, mold and different solutions underneath the mattress where the mattress always gets that body moisture uh, coming through. No problems at all with, uh, with the mattresses now that I've got the hypervent in. The challenges that are faced uh, in a lifestyle like this, the cost of fuel I think is one of the big ones, but you've also got to uh, get fresh water. Um, so this boat holds 110 gallons. Um, that's good for about a month. It depends upon how many people are on board and stuff. Sometimes you're gonna have to uh, get water sooner. Sometimes the weather isn't right for going to get fuel or the weather isn't right to go and get water. I hadn't been getting water or fuel from here. I get uh, uh, stove oil from Campbell River. They only have diesel here. You get more bang for the buck for uh, stove oil and it's only a nickel, uh, a liter more expensive. So what you got there is the radio, the VHF. I, brought, I monitor the radio and we go we do rescues of people that are in distress that are in the local area. It can be challenging at times, you know, when the weather is rough, if you go by uh, dinghy to the dock uh, for whatever reason and trying to bring back uh, groceries or people or supplies, it can be a little bouncy, especially in the winter. You really have to pick your time. You know, a lot of people, I think, want to just say I'm gonna live my life this way today and then they go out and they live their life because they got the hard earth underneath them out here you've got to take into account the environment that you live in and then pick your uh, moment when you're going to go uh, to shore and get the supplies and stuff right now being summertime this is great weather come back in six months it's a, it's a much different story and we're all huddled in under our blankets with the heaters going and that's one of the things you know keeping it heated if we're going to run firewood in the other boat, then, uh, you know, that's another one of the challenges is to collect the firewood. Living out here is kind of like living in, in the wild without, you know, really being in the wild. You still need a tether to land for medicine, for clothes, for food, for fuel, for water. But once you've got those things, then you can kind of get away and, uh, and, it, and you can feign uh, independence from the system. Because I'm, you know, even though I'm off-grid, I'm really only off-grid-ish. There's only so far you can go. But that was one of the things I come up here 10 years ago uh, to find out was if there was a place I could anchor up or set up uh, and homestead. There really isn't. You need, you need people, you need all of the ingenuity of the human uh, species to implement all the things, you know, the supply line, to bring the food, to bring the supplies and uh, take care of all things, take away the garbage and, you know, we really do need this stuff and no man is an island and we're coming into the main salon here which I guess uh, people would call maybe the living room or they would call this the kitchen but it's really a galley on a, on a boat this area here is known as the main salon it's it's mostly regular stuff you know it's got water hot cold just just like indoors one of the things that I wanted on these boats, I had been living in a 1972 Sport Coach motorhome, and it had this uh, four burner stove with the oven over. And what I like about the oven over is, is that uh, I can see what I'm burning without even having to bend over. You know, it's just, it's just right there. Uh, and so these boats, the original boats all came with these, and I really wanted this style and I've seen a number of boats that had taken this out and got rid of this and put it down there well when you put it down here you lose that storage space which I use for you know all the, the things of cooking and things for cleaning and then all of the pots and pans and the blender and just the the things that are needed plates glasses coffee cups things like that you know regular stuff nothing too unusual that has the fan over top so it's fancy. it's very, very very fancy stuff for 1972 so the fridge is a it's a three-way fridge which means it runs on propane um, electricity and 12 volt though the 12 volt is just a temper it's just from running from dock to dock to you plug back in uh, but it uh, it has a small freezer in it. I have a, um, a small deep freeze upstairs that's running on solar. Um, these fridges are 2500 bucks. They're hard to, to
could get now because they are three-way and the insurance companies don't want you to have propane on a boat because people don't know how to use propane. So this one here was installed in the 1990s. Benefits that I've found while living on this boat have been that uh, I've got a really nice moat and no lawns and I can hear or I see everybody coming. There's kind of that sort of privacy and protection. Um, it uh, Up until the cost of fuel was so expensive, it was an inexpensive way uh, to, to live. But uh, I like the privacy of it. I like living on my own. I don't want anybody above me. I don't want anybody beside me. I don't want anybody below me where I have to listen to them fighting or other things that they might be doing. I'd rather be uh, on my own. Uh, it gives me my independence in a way that I can't get on land. On land, you're, you're stuck with trailer parks or you've got to go and find a campground or you've got to find a cul-de-sac or you've got to find a beach or you've got to find something every time you want to go to sleep, which is every day. And even if you find those spots, those spots will wear out on you. People will report you or they come knocking. And, uh, the, with the vans, they're you know they're cold at night, and then uh, in the morning when the sun hits, they they heat up, and you're sweating by the time you get up. And this is the boat life for me. Well, I was I had other boats, but I never wanted to live on them because they were just too small. I'd already knew that I didn't want to live on anything less than 37 feet. This is 41 feet, and it gives me that opportunity to have the indoor furniture and to live like a real human being. There's also a uh, storage space down below the floor here and through the stairs there w w that's cool. So you can keep vegetables and some of these things downstairs, you know, that don't need to be in the fridge, but need to be kept cool. Cutting board, just like they have in real life. Utensils. However, I'm the only one that's running a, a 15 cent pack of toothpicks left over from the 1970s. And those are made from real good wood, not that soft wood you get now. Uh, this one here is just going to be, well, it's going to be more cooking stuff that's jammed in there for me for today. And again, more cooking stuff. So uh, everything that you need stows, you know, uh, stows away nicely. There's certainly, there's certainly room on a 41 canoe cove. I didn't want to, I've had other boats didn't really want to live on any of the smaller boats. I don't want a boat. I didn't want to be in a situation where you've got the, the, the bench seat and the table and the bench seat and you're sitting there, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's not comfortable. Now I've, well, this boat had that. I moved the table from here back to here and there's one of the benches. The other bench is upstairs and I put in this, this chair here, which, you know, really allows me to be comfortable and I can navigate from here. I can watch my navigation from here. I can watch the world spinning out of control over here. And uh, I can entertain and uh, I'm quite comfortable. The computer desk, you know, uh, all of these little additions, you know, they take time, but uh, they're all in. As I was telling you earlier, I'm running uh, air conditioning on this boat uh, by solar. And that's the unit right there. It's not in the window right now. It's just one of the window units. And I run it off solar in the summertime when it gets that hot. There's a small library that I keep over there. Um, everything's, you know, condensed. Everything has its spot. So the forward cabin also has its own head. Uh, it used to have a shower that's decommissioned. Um, and then there's two bunks, one on each side. And then there's a lot of storage space, which I'm mostly using as a pantry down there on one side and electronics on on the other side, again, it has the wardrobe and um, what would they call it, a linen closet at home. But on the boat, I just call it the place where I keep my sheets. What I've learned about myself about living on a boat is, is that I can be independent. I can be out here on my own, that I can enjoy my own company. I don't actually need anybody around to entertain me. A boat uh, provides an endless task list of fun things to fix and repair and uh, renew. But uh, mostly I've learned that I, I think that I do have the, uh, the, the skill set. Um, because to live on a boat, you need to know how this, all, all of your systems operate. If you don't know how your systems operate and one of them goes down, then what are you going to do? So I know plumbing and I know electricity and I know engines. I can do all of that. 
Um, this is more than knowing about myself. It's given me the opportunity to employ those different assets or different aspects of my personality into one area where every one of those is, is required. I think I'm happier out here uh, as well that I don't have neighbors and I don't have uh, the rent bills and I don't have I don't have a driver's license I don't have a bank account I don't have uh, an address you know there's a lot of things that I don't have that everybody has and I'm doing just fine without that stuff in fact I'm a little resistant to uh, signing up for some of those things now so this one here is the Tanu warrior and uh, it's part of an estate so the boat might look like a mess to a lot of people's eyes but we've really done a lot of cleanup on this boat and right now we're getting to the point where we're starting to put things back together and we've got uh, these two engines here up and running we're working on those two there right now we're working on this inflatable and that inflatable and an inflatable out back there was just so much stuff we'll go upstairs in a bit and and uh, show you upstairs but I think uh, we'll take take a, a, a quick trip inside to see what uh, a dirty old fish boat looks like after 70 years. You couldn't really get in here. I mean, the floor was just full of stuff. Yeah, kind of like some of the old uh, war movies. You got this door here, which goes down into the engine room. And you see you go down by ladder. And you, they don't do that much anymore. And this is the head in this one. This one also has dual controls, but this is a single engine. And uh, it's got uh, the controls and what have you here. The controls weren't working, there was no reverse, and there are cables uh, that go over a wheel. And we were down to one strand on the throttle. So we've got that all repaired. There's one you guys don't see very often, which is the old satellite phone uh, for calling loved ones when you're at sea. Back, you know, in the 80s is the uh, wood stove, and that one there is a diesel stove. Uh, but again, you run into the same problem that diesel's expensive. So there's talk. On the drawing board right now, we're talking about moving this to where the diesel stove is and retiring the diesel stove. So yeah, we got those two bins of, uh, of food out of there that are all outdated. But there is some food on the boat that uh, is still within range, but uh, we're not throwing that away. We're, you know, if uh, we end up in a supply chain crisis over the winter, people will be happy to eat outdated food. These are, this is just one ring of watches. That came on the boat. There's this one bag of fuse links. Um, just tons. Of, this here is just a bag of cables for your for your phones and stuff. It's just there's so much stuff, and a lot of the stuff is outdated, you know. And so it's gone into a bin in the back for recycling. My advice to people who would like to take on the boating uh, lifestyle is uh, to make sure that uh, you know what you're doing. There's a lot of people that we run into out here that don't, that have the dream, that don't have the skill set. They uh, haven't taken into account the non-glossy parts of the, of the dream and sometimes real life sets in real fast out here. Uh, so my advice to people who want to live out here is, is to, uh, to know yourself to know your vessel and to know um, how to respond in situations that are not just a matter of getting out of the car door and locking the car and walking down the street away from the problem. There's nowhere to go when you're out here. You've got to be self-reliant, you've got to have the skill sets, or you've got to have those people on your team. And I know right now that there's a, a, a number of young people that are heading in that direction, and a lot of times they don't understand anchoring, um, and so they're their anchor lifts and they drag and they crash into somebody, they might not understand plumbing and now they've got a sinking problem, they might not understand electricity or solar so they don't have enough electricity to run their systems, you know. Um, so it, it, there's a lot of skills that are required and the more experienced that you are, the better. It, you know, if you can get uh, in with somebody that's doing it and kind of follow them or you know, there's a lot of things that can be learned on YouTube videos and there's tons of people that are living on boats and traveling. Good the lighting is for you down here, but you see we've, all of these power tools are on the boat, there are plenty of duplicates. There's a, a plumbing hardware store over there, there's plumbing hardware here, there's all kinds of fasteners that we've sorted out from bins and boxes, there's uh, heaters and uh, uh, boat lights and uh, that saw it loved it uh, bag is full of Christmas lights and a lot of them are all brand new still in their packaging 
and there's a whole library of books up forward. And then in, in here is we have the engine room, which has got an old, um, what is this, an 871 Jimmy. And these are a uh, very well-known, uh, reliable engine. They're from, if I remember correctly, from World War II. And uh, this one runs, starts right up, doesn't smoke, it's not leaking oil. These engines are known to leak oil. I think that this engine is fresh. This engine was installed in 2004. This vessel used to be part of the uh, BC Packers uh, fishing uh, fleet in the 1980s, I think it was. Over here is the generator that uh, runs uh, the systems on this boat. <laughs> this one is still very old school. There's only a lead acid battery. There's no lithium. Up here, these are the uh, cables that run the, uh, the gears and the throttles. It's not like the modern day stuff, which is all sheathed and crimped off, what have you. And then to shut the engine off, it's just this one right here, which goes to a ring up through that door we were at a minute ago at the top of these, this ladder. And you just pull it and it's off. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty basic system. This is the hydraulic system that uh, operates the boom on this one and operates the anchor on this one. One of the previous owners installed this generator. There had just been a gas generator on deck that people were using. But this is a nice little Kubota three-cylinder with a seven and a half kilowatt head. And so this winter, I'll be charging my boat, the, the smaller boat, with this one, just by plugging my boat into this boat and running it. And then it charges all of the boats. And instead of me running the small one over there, I think I'll be able to charge faster with, with the bigger one. Well, my personal philosophy on life has always been live large or live like you're rich so that when you are, it's not such a culture shock. I have a website. Uh, it doesn't really cover the boating thing. It's more to do with the world at large. It's also to do with alternative uh, health uh, methodology. And you can go to freedomforcenews.com and uh, you can find me there. Uh, that's my personal website where I post a lot of uh, interesting information, information that you might not get. I've worked uh, in the past uh, and I've met some amazing people in, in the world that are big contributors and big players in, in the way that the world is spinning right now. Uh, but they're, it's hard to get traction when you're censored by Google or YouTube or uh, Patreon or any of these uh, platforms. I'm not sure that I'm making a difference, but just in case I am, I post up the information to the things that I think are relevant that aren't just parroting what everybody else is saying. And sometimes you'll find that I have a different opinion on things, but that's usually because I've done a lot of research. I, I, I've got the type of mind where I can, you know, go through a lot of data and, and come out with something and sometimes people miss the obvious. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.